Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Charcha with the Chachas. Now, there is no better point. Sorry, Prashant, my bad. Say hello. Hello and welcome to the podcast. Welcome, guys, and wishing you all, all of our listeners, a very happy Diwali because we are recording this on Diwali. But when you will be listening this, it will still be a season of Diwali, but posted. But Happy Diwali and happy festive season to all of our listeners and near and dear ones. So guys, today we have someone really special. We have Mr. Suhail, who is the director and founder of Quill Foundation. Quill Foundation is an advocacy which fights for the injustices with uh, the communities which people do not give much credit to or which people shun like the minority community the dalits the adivasis thank you mr suhail for joining us on this episode of charcha with the chichas um, how are you doing thank this you so diwali season thank you for having me thank you it's our pleasure sir how are you doing this diwali season sir very nice i'm in kerala actually Uh, in the last 15 years okay. i was actually uh, i used to celebrate Div- diwali uh, from delhi but unfortunately uh, because of the pandemic yeah. i am now here in kerala so there is no diwali celebrations going on in kerala uh, so i miss it this time it will be very surprising for most of our listeners that uh, na- a, ma- a man with the name suhel okay uh, most probably he's a muslim and he's saying that he's, he he cannot uh, so he's he feels bad because he cannot celebrate diwali this year so how does that work around aren't muslims against diwali uh, <laughs> <laughs> that's a joke yeah of course yeah. of course <laughs> yeah it's, a, it's a, on a lighter mark actually uh, when you uh, when you go into kerala uh, mm. what you see is the, the mixed culture right there is no uh, there is no such thing as your religion. celebration my celebration everyone celebrates everyone yeah it's yeah. a celebration of uh, diversity that mm. is what you see in kerala hmm hmm right that's absolutely right sir so um, as I, as we see you know this season brings a positive vibe around the country i feel you know um, you be of any religion creed or caste and you know uh, everybody would have one favorite sweet during diwali mine is karanji what is mine your is karanji, favorite for sure karanji and kaju katli for sure karanji my father Absolutely. just made kaju katli is kaju kaju barfi yeah. <laughs> Ka- nobody beats kaju katli right no like, chance uh, brother no chance foreigners they eat kaju katli they are like this is not cooked i'm like <laughs> this is gold we 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 love this sweet so much we put a metal on it we put silver on it okay mm, guys yeah. this is a joke this, we don't put metal <laughs> on it we put silver <laughs> foiling on it okay so it's such a joyous moment okay of course and um, so even more all, so in this so moment all, in in these days in these times because uh, yesterday i was just thinking about this thinking about diwali you know, and this time i think with the covid situation and with the national the international situations it's a very very dark uh, it's it's one of the darkest moments in our lives right it's not it's a very sad moment yeah. because so many lives are lost so the economy is down people are losing their jobs many people are going through a lot of hardships and this festival i think it makes sense at this time of the year it's a very very apt because i was thinking about this and i was i was sending some messages messages across to my friends and i was typing happy diwali to you and your family only love and light because that is what we need in these moments in these testing moments internationally nationally every point of the world and i think it's a very positive season that we are in no matter what's going around the world exactly yeah diwali is actually uh, the festival of lights i think uh, even uh, the west the, the people in the west they admire us a lot in terms of the celebrations that we do the colors the yeah, lights absolutely they reflect i have a, a, a friend from us he was celebra- he was wishing me uh, diwali and he was uh, saying that he's unfortunate that this time he was actually supposed to uh, come here in india uh, to make a documentary but also uh, to participate in the diwali so he was so uh, uh, sad that he was not able to, uh, to have join us this diwali so yeah so also coming to the fact that you know um, 
this year uh, normally diwali comes in every year and that's also a saying in hindi language right when people try in too much and they say har roz diwali nahi hoti wala saying also comes in <laughs> so this year when diwali comes in out of out of all the you know sadness and all the sitting at home and everything comes out this diwali means a little more than the other diwalis that we have celebrated don't you feel like that how are you feeling like right now this diwali i feel like um yeah 2020 has been a different year you can say than the normal year but for the people you know it has been you can say a resetting year something you had to look at something where you had to slow down something you had to recalculate in your life uh, whatever uh, how about you soil do you do you feel the same yeah that's right actually uh, when you go on a highway uh, where you go uh, in full speed with your car there is a thing called stop and proceed so stop and yeah. proceed is actually to to uh, nourish ourselves to uh, boost ourselves and then create a fresh energy and then again proceed so that you don't feel the boredom and you also think about whether whatever you have been doing till now is right or wrong so i think definitely this is a stop and proceed for the entire civilization the human civilization across the globe uh, this is uh, basically uh, looking back and also looking mm. to the future and also looking at the present as in uh, mm. just to just to uh, ponder our uh, our thoughts whether whatever we have been doing is right or wrong and right. it has and actually it. set it actually clicked us reset button uh, right. as far Absolutely. as the, the nature is concerned right yeah. right yeah. and when you look across history when you look across uh, a lot of writings that is one thing that has been enc- encouraged throughout time that reset look back look back to the good look back to the bad and accordingly calibrate your present and then you uh, you know you uh, design your future basically that's what a lot of uh, your mic. B- b- what your mic is again cracking a little bit cracking now no better cracking now no 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 okay yeah so i was saying that's what a lot of uh, ancient books and a lot of ancient people talk about reset and calibrate because what you do is you look at the past look at the good the bad and then uh, you calibrate your present accordingly and that's how you design your future that's how you de- destine you know that's, that's how you destine your future okay so talking about things looking back uh, we were going to uh, talk about actually we had recorded this uh, f- is it cracking again yep yeah a little bit start Uh, so this is one thing that i wanted to ask you mr sohel quill foundation when we talked about the way we got connected it was quill foundation what exactly is quill foundation and what do you do at quill foundation uh yeah quill foundation is basically a research and advocacy center uh, which does uh, uh, research uh, around human rights and the law related to it. so it has uh, collaborations with universities it tries to understand what is human rights and the law all about and what are the laws which uh, which creates uh, certain loopholes uh, for uh, human rights violations uh, like for instance secu- special security legislation and things like right. that so mm-hmm. and also it also uh, the, the 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 primary uh, uh, funder or the ideology that we believe in is the constitution of india and right. uh, the slogan that we raise is back to the constitution towards equality liberty fraternity and justice okay okay so this is only so limited only, to india or also only international india, yes it's based only in delhi india. uh it's only limited to india yes okay talking about liberty um this week this word was used a lot right this week this word liberty came into existence after a long long time don't you feel like that and it came after a long time after like you know it was a master stroke by the supreme court of india to look at people's personal liberty and say if you do not like something don't watch it what's your take on that <laughs> actually uh, it's a big joke uh, that uh, supreme court <laughs> says about personal liberty and uh, it says about the personal liberty of arnab goswami and uh, it is what is what we call as selective justice uh, you have uh, many uh, you have uh, journalists across india which has been arrested in the last few months like for instance you have kishore chandra from uh, you have from northeast uh, you have prashant kanojia you have dhawal yeah. patel you have naresh khosla you have akbar patel 
different journalists across India who have been arrested and they are still lingering inside Siddhi the jail. Kappan. Siddhi Kappan uh, from yeah. Kerala, my own state. Yeah. Uh, they are inside jail and uh, even their case has not been listed in the Supreme yeah. Court for bail. Uh, and so all of a sudden, despite the fact that there were nine different errors, that was what point was pointed out by the bar and benches. Yes. They say that there were nine different errors inside. In fact, this the power of attorney was point. not signed. The vakalat nama was not signed. Where Arnab gives the power to the lo uh, lawyer, advocate to, uh, you know, uh, file the petition on behalf of him. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So still, uh, you have we say that uh, mm, the uh, what is personal that? liberty. The personal liberty. Hmm. <laughs> yeah. Personal liberty. And what about the personal liberty of Stan Swami? And whatever yes. Rao and people like them who are extremely look, uh, their their health condition is such that uh, mm. you, you can see that whatever um, uh, Stan Swami's hand shakes because because of his uh, health issues. Mm. Yeah, and uh, he said, and "I need a straw, a straw. Uh, to drink yeah. water." And even in this particular state, the law says every accused is innocent unless proven guilty. Proven guilty. And the law also says that bail is the law; jail is an exception. And still. They say that this is only for selective people. These fundamentals are only applied to certain people, not to others. And for that, for the same thing, like, you know, you are uh, innocent and proven guilty, they put on UAPA, where it's yeah. according to UAPA, you are guilty and proven innocent, which changes the law yeah. completely. And it is it should be applied on a terrorist only or, you know, someone who has uh, forsaken the country in any say, but not against someone who speaks uh, against power or, sta you know, speaks truth to power, not against yes. them, but the people in power right now are doing the same. And, you know, they are being the court right now. They are being the justice system. And when someone of their, or you can say someone that suits their cause is put into the same situation, they uh, rile up. They say, how, oh my God, this is bias against media. Media is in for, you know, there is no, this is, uh, what's, uh, this is emergency situation again. I'm like, yeah. This is emergency situation again, but you saw it right now because it happened to your guy. It is emergency situation again because you are not opening your eyes to other people. Because you, they have already been they have already been declared as international. This is one of the things. There are two things that I would like to uh, add into this conversation. Number one, when we are talking about the Supreme Court, we are, we are talking about the judge or the justice who uh, talked about personal liberty and who talked about if you don't like a channel, don't watch it. He is. Uh, Chandra Chud, I think Dr. Chandra, D.Y. Chandra Chud. Yeah. And Chandra yeah. Chud, the, uh, this family has a long history. His father was the longest serving chief justice of India. And he was the one who opposed the emergency which was imposed by the Indira Gandhi government. He was government. a very, very strong critic of the Indira Gandhi government throughout his life, of the Congress government throughout, it, throughout his life. And his son right now, he is very, very accomplished in terms of the, he's not only renowned in India, he's not only famous in India, he's famous around the world for, uh, for his study, for his education, for his thoughts, for his ideology. Actually, ideally, he's not built for the Indian society because I've read some of his judgments, the Sabri Mala case, uh, the homophobia, the 377, yeah. I suppose, Eric, am I right? The yeah. Homosexual case. He's got yeah. a very, very liberal frame of mind. He says that privacy and dignity, privacy and dignity are the fundamental rights of human beings. And so it was surprising because it came from him. This guy is not someone who's going to impose. He's, he, he cannot be declared as a mouthpiece of the government. No chance, I'm telling you. He cannot be influenced because you see his thought process. His son is also an advocate. But... The thing that he, everything that he said was right. Everything that he said was right. But the only problem was the selectivity. Because uh, Jet Malani, I suppose, or Kapil Sibal, who was it? Kapil Sibal was fighting for uh, the state of government or uh, Anvay Naik, uh, the state of Maharashtra or Anvay Naik. And um, Kapil Sibal said, sir, even Siddiq Kampan is still in jail. But there was no comment from DY, Dr. D.Y. Chandrachod. And that is what made this, you know, imbalance. Because every day remembered all the fundamentals and uh, the basics of personal liberty and human rights were re-established only for the case of Arnab. But there are so many cases still languishing behind. But the problem is, most of these people and the government have already termed them as anti-national. Sudha Barajwad, anti-national. Stan Swami, anti-national. Vara Vara Rao, anti-national. I mean, if everyone is anti-national, <laughs> you can't say you can't term everyone international before the court proves it. 
I mean how? Yeah. So that is. I think this is one of the problems. This is one of the even now they might say Siddha Kampan, Muslim, international, the uh, uh, Kashmiri journalist is arrested, international, Prashant Kanushia, uh, anti-Hindu. Uh, how does this work around? Uh, how how can you already term people as national and anti-national? You can you can <laughs> see Prashant's fr frustration there. <laughs> uh the the biggest actually uh, when you go into the case of arnab goswami actually arnab goswami has been uh, charged under a personal case it is basically yeah. unvoy unvoynized abetment suicide case basically mm. his uh, personal case actually the case which has to be charged against him was should have, which should have been charged against him was actually creating enmity between communities using his channel spreading uh, he has hate, hate uh, speech. a lot of damage to the indian society uh the to the to the to the, uh, the the fabric of the secular fabric of this country so actually he should have been charged for such cases and he has been charged uh, on a petty crime which is bailable uh, and i support uh, giving him bail uh, because uh, this is not something i mean bail is a, is the right uh, bail is the law jail is an exception so actually what should have been charged against him was this and number 2 uh, the thing that has to be uh, the, the, the incident of giving him bail should trigger the debate on uh, creating a, a, a procedure uh, a guidelines for register of uh, registry of the of the of the matters in the supreme court of how you list tomorrow's case then the, the the next day's case in the supreme court so a guidelines need to be prepared and this is something which is missing and that is why privileged people uh, get the uh, luxury of being uh, they have listed uh, their cases even if there are so much of errors and which is not fit to be charged, to have uh, to be filed in a supreme court so yeah i think these serious questions need to be raised at this particular point of time that's right and also it's the same question as you said you know the people who have influence or people who have uh, unrenowned their cases get heard very quickly right and the people yeah. like a common man a middle class person who has filed a case for his land or you know a murder of someone or his relative he gets a date 6 months one year one and a half year later in court just to make a hearing and by the time yeah. they get to court there is no evidence left there is uh, nothing left and you have spent so much money by then that you say let it go there is no point uh, in the system uh, so what is exactly what where... happens even in terror cases the terror cases for in, for instance the so called uh, war on terror and terror cases if you go uh, these are the cases where uh, there are people who are languishing in jails for 23 years for 15 years and then the court says that sorry jo uh, hai we we have we are sorry that we kept you in jail for such long time and we uh, destroyed your whole life and your family's life uh, you can go home so this is the, 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 the most uh, dangerous part of this whole uh, thing is when it comes to the terror cases absolutely right sir it's very you know hard to keep a biases away and make a decision judgment and maybe that's why they are selected there so right now in this justice system do you feel what is because you have you are a lawyer and you have been in the system for such a long time so what is the main problem as you know judges are less the cases are too much uh, where do you see how can we find a solution around it if you have thought about it i think there have been lots of serious discussions on this particular issue of pendency inside the courts as across the courts like from supreme court to lower courts so uh, there, there have been many law commission reports uh especially which uh, deals with this particular problem of uh, dealing with the pendency of cases so it is not only the problem of the whole uh, situation where it is slow it is running slow it's also uh, a situation where for instance if you say into the uh, you go into this uh, the anti terror laws or when you go into the uh, terror uh, uh, so the, the terror cases so to say uh, uh, when you go into that you, what you can find is there is a different investigation agency set up to only deal with this particular problem and that is called the national investigation agency and i yeah. and you have a different juridical system cutting across you have from the investigation agencies it has its own uh, you have prosecutioners prosecutors it has its own judicial system it's not, it has yeah. its own court it has its okay. own law it okay. called an nia act so okay. uh, with, uh, the case happens in this particular court only terror anti terror laws or terror cases are being 
जो है डिस्कस्ड इवन बिसाइड द फैक्ट दैट ओनली दिस हैज बीन डेल्ट इन दिस यू कैन फाइंड द पेंडेंसी ऑफ केसेस व्हाट इज द रीजन द रीजन बीइंग दैट देयर आर हंड्रेड्स ऑफ विटनेसेस व्हिच आर जो है कोटेड इनसाइड द इनसाइड द चार्ज शीट saying okay. that see these are the people who saw this particular crime so uh, the, the way in which the whole uh, jo hai charging of uh, jo hai filing of charges against uh, uh, victims when it come to sorry against the accused when it comes to the uh, terror cases is considered it is designed in a way that it prolongs the yeah. case and uh, by the time the judgment comes uh, they make sure that the uh, punishment is already been given against the accused be it right. uh, He is given acquitted. I mean, like, even if he is hmm. acquitted, uh, he is already punished. Right. So that is how right. the whole system is uh, designed. Yeah. Again, that is where the media trial comes into play. That before uh, the thing is actually run through the courts, before the trial happens, before the hearings happen, the media already declares the uh, you know if he is an if the accused is a convict or if he is uh, acquitted, convicted, uh, whatever. And uh, yeah, that's one of the things around the country that's going on. Of course, this country has a lot of uh, court uh, cases pending in the courts. Uh, it has a lot of workload. The judges have a lot of workload. I guess it also has to do with the ratio. of the people to the ratio of courts and judges available to hear and you know proceed the trials do the proceedings but uh, another aspect that came out during this time was uh, the contempt of court the contempt of supreme court situation that ca- came about in the past two days and uh, this was evident at the time of prashant bushan for his couple of tweets it uh, 20 hours or i guess 20 to 24 hours uh, only uh, was given by the court only for his uh, two tweets only two tweets rattled up the minds of the people of the um, so called uh, so uh, honorable judges honorable supreme court how does this go about because i think even in the supreme court you have people you have humans who are sitting in the court and humans are always fallible they can make mistakes that is so human that is so very very human but to declare the supreme court as supreme and holy so that nobody can criticize it is i think it's uh it is uh what do you call it it's a um there's a word when you use for code right it's um, yeah. in coding i do, i don't remember it people are rewarded uh-huh. bug it's a bug it's a bug in the court it's a bug in the system <laughs> the uh, when you say that you cannot uh, criticize the supreme court it is a bug in the system which has to be fixed because it does not pass the test of the constitution dr d y chandrachur talks about this in uh, his speeches and also in his judgments that there is the test of uh, uh constitution which also came which which also came to be known about right now because arnab goswami uh, uh, personal liberty was given to arnab goswami but then it is delayed for the other people so the constitution it's a question whether the constitution has passed this particular test or not again the contempt of supreme court is another test another bug i suppose it's a bug but it is another test of the constitution which will be tried and tested time and time again in the case of prashant bhushan in the case of uh, now kunal kamra right now because he's made some interesting comments which people despise which a lot of people say how can he say that but i don't know why he did that but there are these people who are always rebellious and who always uh, they remind you and they bring back things to your realization they make you stop pause and think about what you've been doing what is your take on the contempt of supreme court case and uh, wh- what's going on right now i think what is just, happening just... is <laughs> no no go uh, on go on i'll say it afterwards <laughs> uh, yeah well, actually what's happening is uh, you have uh, three pillars to a state the judiciary the execution and executive and the legislature the legislative yeah. Yeah. yeah so uh, when a, a system turns autocratic what mm. happens is the entire structure mm. becomes autocratic mm. it behaves in a way that you cannot you uh, have when you when you uh, criticize me it is uh, seditious they say it is yeah. it's seditious so yeah. sedition is charged you know there is a case being you uh, have argued inside the supreme court by uh you have you know um what's his name the the uh vinod dua vinod dua, dua. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yeah he he argues that uh, criticizing modi is not sedition mm. so the True. bjp yeah, guys absolutely. are uh, saying that no criticizing modi is sedition okay. so criticizing the court is not sedition you can criticize yeah. judgments but mm. there is a, 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 there is a, a, a line which is clearly mm. defined in so mm. what i what i believe is uh, when a system is 
uh, turned autocratic. Hmm. All the supporting pillars of the system turns autocratic. Yeah. It behaves hmm. in the same way. That is what we are hmm. seeing in India as of now. Hmm. Right. That is what we are seeing in India right now. And uh, there is a saying. I I forgot the saying. It says something like the court is final. What the court says is final, but it can be fallible. It is final, but it can be fallible. And this and is one thing yeah, that people need to understand. Not infallible. Yeah. It's not, not infallible. infallible. It's not yeah. infallible. See, these days people are questioning the holy books of the past, right? Take any book, Bhagavad Gita, the Bible, the Quran. People keep criticizing it, and some people say it might be fallible. It might not be fallible. These are discussions and uh, you know arguments, conversations which are going on. When we can have conversations about these holy books of ours, holy religions of ours, whether they are fallible, whether they are you know they can be criticized, whether they are intrinsically uh, accurate or not, why cannot we have the same conversation about exactly. the Supreme Court? <laughs> why cannot yeah. we have the this uh, conversation about the Constitution because it was designed. by humans it was designed by our fathers the founding fathers of the nation but again they were humans when we have discussions about our religion when we question our religion why cannot we question the supreme court and why shouldn't should it be counted as contempt of the court this is a very very open now uh, when you talked about modi narendra modi and uh, the case of sedition the point here is people are very very emotionally attached to a personality when you are emotionally attached to a personality anything that others will speak against him will sound seditious to you you will not like it now the question is if you don't like it is it necessary that he has to undergo punishment is it necessary there's there's two things you not liking it and the person being actually guilty if i don't like something is the person actually guilty just because i don't like it and that is where the play comes up i had a very good friend of mine which with whom i worked i would like to just give this example and he likened narendra modi to my father he was saying that narendra modi is the father of the nation do you say these things to your father i said boss my father is my father narendra modi is the prime minister these are two different things <laughs> is, he is the prime minister yeah narendra modi is not the father of india no. give, please give him a history lesson <laughs> please tell him <laughs> mahatma gandhi is the father of india narendra modi ka photo nahi hai note pe abhi tak theek hai so, india <laughs> india banne ke 70 years baad aaye hai ye prime minister मतलब इंडिया पहले ही आ चुका है जो पहले ही आ चुका है उसके बाद आने वाले इंसान को यू कैनॉट टर्म इम एज द फादर यू कैन से इज अ पर्सनैलिटी यू कैन से इज अ फेमस पर्सनैलिटी यू कैन से इज समन हुज मेड एन इम्पैक्ट बट यू कैनॉट से दैट इज द फादर ऑफ इंडिया आई मीन यू हैव टू नीड यू हैव टू यूज लॉजिक दैट इज वेर द बक्त लॉजिक थिंग्स कम अबाउट विच आई डोंट वॉन्ट टू गेट इन टू बट देर इज द लॉजिक दैट यू हैव टू यूज Yeah, actually, uh, in India, uh, actually, India is a place uh, uh, where you have a legacy of deep-rooted superstition, and also uh, you have uh, the history of uh, blind following uh, to religious clerics and things like that. So uh, it is quite normal that uh, when in a place like Germany, uh, when people treated um, Hitler as he was treated in the 1940s. uh well uh, the 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 uh, proportionately the people when when indian street uh, an autocrat like modi yeah uh, it will be definitely like the way that we see now hmm so there is right. no exaggeration or there is no uh, disproportionate uh, thing that we see uh, when you compare it to the other autocrats and other uh, rulers across the history right <laughs> yeah yeah it's no different it's no different and people tend to forget it see the i think the root of the problem is uh, you not knowing history when you do not know history when you do not know the history and i'm not talking about the whatsapp history i'm not talking you won't about learn history for <laughs> i'm not talking about history which hasn't it. been tried and tested the thing about yeah. history is that the different versions of history will be tried and tested if your version of history has not been tried and tested or if you say that my version of history is final that jawaharlal nehru or i think who not Jawa, sanjay gandhi was a muslim if i am uh, final it's if it's final in my mind that sanjay gandhi was muslim because firoz shah gandhi firoz gandhi and this and all if you think and if you don't allow people to actually comment on that or make some you know back and forth then nobody can change you and that is your problem If you think that my version of history is final, if you think that uh, Mahatma Gandhi was anti-India, anti-Hindu, and that's it, then that is that is not right, man. You need to go and you need to. That is what ideas is about, right? You need to go and have an exchange of ideas. You need to have the counter opinions on that. You need to have counter facts on that. 
if you have a yeah. fact which gives you which supports one side of the uh, con, uh, argument or conversation you need to look at the counter facts what facts do the, does the other side of the argument or other side of the party uh, pose or give and that is one of the things and while you are talking about germany let's get so, get yeah. into some yeah. international so affairs just, <laughs> yeah so i just want to ju- in jump into germany's thing so you know prashant went on a rant so it comes in where germany has learned from the mistakes right where time, hitler took time. them in like you know uh, i do not know when hitler came into power it was i guess 1930s 35. around about the 35, 35 he came into power and by 39 they were having the second world war i mean four years it took him okay in that time okay wherein the media was just coming into play okay radio was just uh, becoming to spread around and just in four years time he was able to brainwash or most of the crowd in germany and make them believe that a certain community is not good enough and they are the pest of the earth and they should be removed and that started world war 2 how far yeah. away are we from that moment because right now we are in that path we are in that zone and what mind you what we learn from germany is that they will learn from the mistakes so quick right that right now they are the pe- if you look at any country who learn from the mistake and change their thought process immediately or you know uh, jump right back i feel it's germany because you say it's german efficiency but it is german efficiency because they r- like to learn and you know keep improving by the day don't you feel so yeah yeah that's right actually uh, the, the date is 1933 and yeah? 1933 to 1945 so uh, yeah. besides the fact well, you you believe you say about holocaust you say about the things atroc- atrocities that hitler and the nazi party did it was all done in a span of only 12 years everything was mm-hmm. done on a span of only 12 years yeah so this much powerful person this much uh, to have this kind of uh, to have power and, and uh, to have uh, the kind of power got by ballot itself they came to power by ballot it was not a coup so uh, when a, a, a political party or a person roots himself on the basis of hate that will not last for long it is not it will not last long it will it will have an easy mm. death this is what yeah. we are going to see even in india we mm. say uh, the bjp we say the sang parivar the whole ideology of this particular uh, political uh, the political existence Alliance. of these group groups are basically yeah. uh, rooted in hate so if mm. there is no hate there is no organization there is no politics for them so i Absolutely. believe that this uh, politics of hate will not last long it is uh, short lived and the the life is very short so this is what we have uh, examples across history not only nazi mm. party you have the fascist party yes. uh, in italy yes. you yeah. have, uh, you have style, uh, different uh, even uh, in russia parties and rulers across mm. the world in the mm. history yeah but, but right now exactly. if we look at yeah. the whole world yeah right now if you look at the whole world in uh, you know in a in a short nutshell most of the countries are right now being ruled by a fascist party or you know um following an, following a certain agenda or you know um, wherein uh, killing is not a big thing for them you know okay people say that you know politics uh, they, you know th- this is not a big deal this things keep happening but uh, after every every 70 years or so you know things repeat because you know that generation has left which saw the horrors what war could do or uh, what it could stage and as i feel you know uh, indira gandhi as people say you know power got to her at some point of time wherein she wanted to keep that power so bad at one point of time that uh, she declared emergency because people were saying that ma'am this is not right what you are doing is not right and sometimes that thing gets to your head you know people who have been in power people who are in power know that feeling don't you feel so like p- power is a, is the biggest and the most deadliest drug that is there in the world yeah yeah that's right uh, but i think one important aspect that need to be discussed is when there is uh, it all all is being everything is being done for power people are, yeah. are made to fight each other in the name of religion in india for the last 10 years you have seen lynchings you have seen uh, communal riots 
you have seen targeted uh, violence happening across India. And according to the United Nations Human Rights Councils, uh, Universal Human Rights Index, and also uh, different, uh, you have uh, uh, think tanks and uh, human rights reports that we have as of now, says clearly mentions that India uh, is has deteriorated in terms of its human rights records. So what, hap what, what normally happens is when there is a violence in the name of religion, when there is violence in the name of uh, particular uh, uh, vested interest politics, what, what people do is, tend to do is, uh, they try to isolate these uh, anti-social elements saying that condemning it, they condemn their, their acts and say that, see, uh, this particular acts of act of violence doesn't have anything to do with us. For instance, when a Muslim guy, goes and beheads uh, a, a French uh, to have, um, a teacher. Uh, Muslims across the world say that, see, we condemn uh, this particular act of violence. Even in India, the Indian Muslims, if you just type the Muslims condemnations uh, towards uh, of uh, the French uh, the teachers as assassination, you can see that there are multiple uh, condemnations happen. Not only about the French uh, incident, also, about it's also about uh, all kinds of violence which happened happened across the globe in the name of Islam. Muslims had condemned it. Uh, when the white supremacists in the U.S. and the Europe when they conduct an act of violence in the name of Christianity, the Christian uh, organizations and wise leaders of that particular community they tends to come uh, forward and say that see this is against the fundamental ethos of Christianity. But what we observe in India is unfortunately that though this particular act of violence is happening across India for the last many, uh, many, month, many years, uh, 1,100 incidences of targeted violence against Muslims had, had happened in India in the name of Hindutva, in the name of religion. Uh, you have, there have been 104 incidences of lynching in the name of religion, Hindu religion. We have not seen any incidents of, uh, of uh, condemnations which came from the Hindu Hold, which, which came from the Hindu organizations or Hindu wise leaders saying that, see, this is against the, this is fundamentally against the essence of Sanatan Dharma. This is against the concepts of Vasudeva Kudumbagam. This is against the concept of Loga Samastha Sukhino Bhavandu. And this has to be uh, isolated. When, 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 when it happened to Graham Stewart's stains in, on 99 uh, January, it happened in, uh, against uh, Christian churches and Christian fathers and nuns across India for the last 10 years. It had, well, Babri Masjid was demolished. And even those people who demolished Babri Masjid, uh, they have been completely set uh, have free by the court. Uh, brazen abuse of state power is being used by this particular group, which uh, claims themselves to be the protectors of a particular religion. But what we have seen is, we have not seen an act of condemnation. We have not seen people, uh, uh, to have uh, the, the religious leaders coming from the Hindu fold saying that, see, we condemn uh, 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 this act of violence. So this is something that needs to be discussed, I think, uh, when it comes to this particular aspect of violence and uh, uh, hate, politics of hate in India. And yeah talking about that uh, if i come from a, you know i uh, speak from a hindu perspective uh, what they would say is if i say from a hindu perspective what they would say is other countries have like you know other religions like christianity or islam they have more the one country that you know they have majority in for example muslims have so many countries that they have majority in christians have most of europe uh, and most of south america america canada all those countries they have uh, but hindus only have one country india um, so we have to protect the motherland uh, so what would you say on that uh, regarding this particular sentiments that we have only one country and uh, I, what i believe is india is not uh, defined in terms of religion it is not defined like uh, saudi arabia after independence india defined saying that we are not a muslim country we are not a hindu country so to say we are not a christian country we are not defined by any religion we are a secular country we are a country which doesn't have any uh, religious bias. We are not uh, defined by religion. So this is how we defined our country. 
So uh, by this uh, to have basis, I think the question is baseless because uh, because this is a very uh, open uh, to have, uh, discussion. So uh, India is a, a country of Vasudeva Kutumbagam. Uh, if you say secularism, yeah. if you say uh, to have religious neutrality, uh, it is not based on the Western philosophy of secularism, the French or the or the, or the, or the European uh, secularism. It is deeply rooted in the in the basic ethos of the, the Hindu culture itself. Because according to the Hindu culture, what you find is it is, uh, it, it regards uh, every diversity as one single one. Uh, family. That's right. So I, yeah, this yeah. is so, what, what we see hmm. is this particular uh, Hindutva politics, what we see now is uh, against the basic not actually Hindu. of uh, the, the, the Sanatan Dharma. You know, uh, when mm. uh, this whole incidence of terror cases happened in uh, in India, there was a bombing uh, campaign which happened in 2007-8 across mm. India. Mm. Uh, th there have been condemnations and, you know, uh, there have been uh, big uh, conferences which happened, uh, which were organized by the Muslim community scholars saying that, see, this, this is against uh, the, the fundamental uh, idea of Islam. So this violence has got nothing to do with Islam and things like that. So, uh, quoting this, I would like to just quote uh, one particular uh, uh, statement of uh, Ajit Kumar Dawal, the National Security Advisor of India. He says that uh, I, I would just like to quote from his uh, small speech, uh, which is there in the YouTube. You can uh, refer to uh, the Yeah, the YouTube uh, speech of his, where he clearly uh, says about the the situation in India and uh, the kind of communalism and the communal attitude of people. So he says, uh, in the Australia India Institute Global Challenges Lecture Series, uh, in a speech which is titled The Challenge of Global Terrorism, he says, we should stop thinking in communal lines. Muslims are with us in the fight against terror much more than any Hindu organizations. You will you tell me yeah. any Hindu organization which has issued a fatwa or a diktat against terrorism. It is in the Ramlila ground with 50,000 Maulanas who passed a fatwa against international terrorism and said that we are going to oppose it. They asked some Hindu organizations also to come in the same platform. They said it will endanger them. They said it will endanger them, quote, quote unquote. So mm -hmm. uh, this is mentioned in the 54.45 minutes of this particular video. Okay. So I would say that mm -hmm. uh, this is what we are discussing about. What I what I feel is all kinds of uh, extreme extreme views, all kinds mm -hmm. of exclusivist views mm -hmm. uh, need to be addressed by the society as a whole. We cannot keep mum when there is mm -hmm. uh, atrocities against okay. particular communities, targeted mm -hmm. violence when it's happening. You cannot say that, see, this is only our country. This is, mm. uh, we have only one country. These kind of uh, arguments is completely against humanitarian uh, mm. values. It is against the values of the Hindu, Hindu religion itself. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So I have, I've, I just want to address uh, three points. Okay. And I think we can, uh, I, I need you to um, enlighten me on that. So number one, when we are talking about India, right? And we were talking about India being, uh, India and the rest of the world because Hindus have only India and Muslims have a lot of other countries. Christians now, we say that most of the Europeans are Christian, uh, Western countries are Christian. They were Christian. I just want to add some more. They were Christian, but now most of the countries are not uh, proclaiming themselves as Christians. Talk about America. It has, it, now it's, it's moving away from that Christian scene. Right, Europe moving away from that, they are denouncing. They are, and I I like to use the word denouncing. They are denouncing Christianity most of the Western countries. So the fact that Christians have a lot of Western countries is not true now. It was true some years ago, 50, 60, 70, 100 years ago, but not now. Okay. So I would like the, the number first point is India is the homeland homeland of Hindus. When we are talking about Hindus having only India 
as a country versus Muslims having a lot of nations as a country, as a homeland. India is the only homeland of the Hindus apart from Nepal and maybe Sri Lanka as well because this is where the Akhand Bharat and all these epics were there and most of these people resided. The second point is India was mostly ruled and habitated by Hindus throughout history if we go about this throughout history they were by hindus by then came the buddhists then after the after christ came the jains and all these religions right and so when hindus defend themselves when they defend their culture when they defend their traditions when they have to defend the secularism through acts of violence right because this is the response this is the response towards uh, the to intolerance of the other communities or this is the response towards uh, any uh, violation of their beliefs or to violation of their traditions isn't some sort of violence isn't some sort of resetting <laughs> like um, okay to do that isn't it okay to do some sort of resetting is what I was thinking I'm just thinking and I'm just uh, representing the Hindu side of things because what happens uh, is what what do you mean by resetting uh, okay that's a very good that's a very good point so when you were talking about in this conversation about Muslims need to condemn right Muslims are condemned and Hindus need to condemn now the reason why I'm thinking Hindus do not condemn these acts are because they think that these sort of acts they neutralize things they level the they neutralize and bring back things for example if somebody is attacking uh, some sort violence of tradition plus violence not uh, not violence plus violence exactly now see let me just explain let me give you some more context for example a person was found uh, uh, carrying beef transporting beef now this is a violation of the hindu tradition and the hindu beliefs and mm -hmm. so killing him or doing some sort of you know it justifies it justifies the it justifies the logic that oh they, they were doing they shouldn't have done the the reason that people they, they he shouldn't have uh, transported beef he shouldn't have said anything anti hindu if he's doing that he should be ready to face the death he should he should be ready to face the consequences so isn't that okay to do so when india has been inhabited and india is a land of hindus why is it wrong for them to defend their rights why is it wrong for them to fight for their um, traditions to fight for their basics the fundamentals Okay, what I think is, uh, this is hmm. how the myopic or didactic way of uh, looking at a particular uh, hmm. a political or a social situation uh, is. Hmm. Uh, hmm. Why do you, we all condemn ISIS, right. Islamic State, hmm. yeah. is right. it so? I condemn, hmm. you condemn, everyone condemn ISIS. Hmm. We believe that they are wrong. Right. They also does the same thing. They also does hmm. the same thing. Right. They kill people saying that this hmm. is against our religion. Right. They believe they, they created a particular uh, kind of uh, bubble. We can say the procrustus bed. You know, there, were, there is a, a Roman um, uh, this thing, a story, which is okay. called the procrustus bed. Okay. Once uh, the the king procrustus uh, mm -hmm. has said to all his people that see, you all are welcome to my uh, kingdom and my palace, okay. Okay. and I would like to give you uh, a grand uh, reception. Uh, to all my people, you all please mm -hmm. come to my palace. You are all welcome okay. for a lunch. And uh, uh, the time was fixed. People came. We, people started to praise the king. And so they said, that see, our king is very uh, generous. He has invited everyone to his palace. And then uh, people went to his palace, had uh, lunch. And between the lunch also, they were praising the king. And in the meanwhile, a uh, king came to the, the room the dining room and they said mm -hmm. that you all have to have a small nap sleep for some time in the bed that I have arranged and then after a small nap you can just leave my palace so people said oh what a, what a kind of generous king do we have it's right. a fantastic king he okay. not only allowed us to have lunch also he said to have a small nap in his palace so then uh, he made people to uh, lay down in, on the bed and after they fell asleep what he did was he told his soldiers to just uh, measure the the people the, the citizens his citizens who are sleeping so he said those those uh, body whose lengths are uh, exceeding. more hmm. uh, exceeding the length of the bed then you have to cut the body yeah. if hmm. it is less than the bed if the length is length of the body is less than the bed just tie in both the sides and stretch it in both those cases, they are killed. Okay. What he decided was he <laughs> need only uh, people who will uh, fit, fit the, the size of the bed. 
that is yeah. the, the definition of the citizen that this okay. uh, oh. the king okay. has decided uh -huh. that okay. see, i will have citizens only the size hmm. of this bed hmm. so this is what we say as exclusivist politics hmm. this is right. what we say that exclusivist nationalism is built isis built the same way isis hmm. said that see we will we have a bed and all those people who will not fit into this bed will be killed hmm. and this is exactly right. what is happening in india in the name okay. of religion you know in mm. the 5th to 15th century in the european uh, history if you see you say it as the, the history has termed it as dark ages the dark right. ages and mm. it is after the 15th century we say as the the, the european renaissance right. you know the pop boniface you uh, the pop, the pop boniface he was yeah. a pop servant he said yeah. he declared that i am uh, i am the state yes i am the state mm. and uh, whoever is uh, have, who is whoever is against me or who doesn't mm. believe in the things that i believe will be killed yeah. yeah this happened the same thing happened in 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 spain you know the expulsion yeah. of jews and yeah. muslims in spain in 1478 that what they did was they said that uh, all those people who will not uh, adhere to these principles will be killed expulsion mm. of the entire uh, even not only the muslims and the jews they even expelled mm. uh, the the christians they said that these yeah. are heretics these yeah, people yeah, doesn't heretics. fit into the uh, christianity that those we, who don't believe uh, the catholic uh, the catholic beliefs they were heretics catholic right mm. yeah mm. and and this particular pope so mm. uh, after the european renaissance what happened was we have the protestant reformation Yeah. Uh, you have the Martin Luther King, uh, where you have the book and his book, Ninety Five Theses, yes. which clearly uh, actually uh, redefined the way that we look at the society, should be. Yeah. the country, and the nations that we build. You have the yeah. uh, the United Nations Charter. You have the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. Yeah. You have the Geneva Conventions. All these historic things. so what Just the word what? the word that you exactly looking for i think or uh, i want to add is the separation of the church and the state the term right the separation yeah. of the church and the state okay so you you are saying that uh, now the religion the separate of religion and the state basically in the context of india and the other countries which are non christian so uh, so you are saying that the state of the government or the rulership and the religion has to be different and this is a conversation which those countries had so many years ago like in the 1800s they had this conversation they had this uh, renaissance in 1800s and so the eastern side of the world is now okay so when we are talking about the separation of religion and the state and a uh, religion and state why don't we begin with the muslim world then because of course the muslim world in the muslim world as i see it as the world sees there's no separation between the religion and the state there is sharia law which is completely religious right then there is a lot of i just know the context of sharia law because i think most of these countries uh, with some exceptions they are run or they are governed by the sharia law so why and another thing i think is that not all countries can denounce the uh, religion and separate the religion from the state but why don't we begin with the muslim world you can't find any muslim country in the world Hmm. which practices entire sharia law what is sharia law for instance okay. well, there is not a single country in the world which completely practices sharia law in its full sense and okay. even, like, only those countries which, which says that we are to uh, have we abide by the sharia law is saudi arabia uh, okay and iran yeah, yeah. Uh, for, for that matter so okay. uh, sharia law is something which is uh, much larger than we think what is sharia it is actually the entire Uh, civil and criminal jurisprudence it, this okay. the entire jo uh, law and values uh, hmm. which is constructed by uh, the 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 quran and the uh, islamic books uh, basically the quran and the hadith so um, as far as muslim countries are concerned what you see is muslim countries have been defined themselves as most of the muslim countries they are not defined as islamic countries for instance turkey Turkey is not an Islamic country. Uh, you have, you can, uh, it, 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 it runs under the ideology of Kamal. You know Mustafa Kamal Atatürk, which is the the most, uh, the 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 most violent form of secularism that that you can see, uh, okay. where there there the, the, the should not be any kind of religion, uh, religious 
interference into the state. Okay. So uh, when you go into the Muslim countries, what we see is not Sharia laws. Uh, okay. This particular uh, misunderstanding need to be removed uh, okay. from this thing. And I, what I believe is this particular uh, logics that why don't Muslim country do this, then we will do this. Uh, right. I, I would suggest hmm. the Hindutva yes. political leadership hmm. that we should hmm. not follow the Muslim countries. Hmm, hmm, hmm. The Muslim hmm. countries are not your imam. Hmm. Muslim countries hmm. are not your imam. You should not follow the Muslim yeah. countries. Hmm. Do let them do whatever they want. Let us define ourselves the way that, that we should according to hmm. our the, the, the basics that we have constructed through years, and that is inclusivity. Inclusivism is the basics of our society. So okay, yeah, that's okay. right. Okay, so just 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 to uh, just to counter that, how many countries can I go in? How many Islamic countries can I go in? Or in how many Muslim majority countries can I go in and speak against the Prophet Muhammad and not get sentenced and not be? So see what I'm saying. I might have used the wrong term, which is Sharia law. But how many countries can I go and not get sentenced to that or not get some kind of imprisonment life? For the blasphemy against Islam, against the Quran, against the Prophet Muhammad, against the God, against the Prophet No, uh, actually, this uh, discussion uh, now I think it has diverted a bit because. Okay, yeah. uh, mm. you have but that's a question I'd like to ask. That that's a question yeah, I'd like because I think then I'll uh, pull it from, uh, pull that context from the Islamic world back to the Indian world because that's why I'm asking you this question. No, actually, we were discussing about. Uh, uh, we are discussing about. A society which adheres to violence. It is violence. civil yeah. violence. A civil society. Mm -hmm. the, the civilians are resorting to violence, targeted violence against uh, communities, fringe groups. There have been fringe groups now been mainstreamized in India. Means uh, people tend to attack against people. Mm -hmm. And then uh, but what happens in India, what happened in India for the last 10 years is that mm -hmm. the state has been completely silent. Mm -hmm. State has been, in a way, uh, they have done the act of omission. There are two mm. types of crime. One is the act of omission and the act of commission when it comes yeah. to a state. Commit mm. is, commission is the state itself or the state itself commits a crime. So in mm. India, what's happening is fringe elements which, which support the Hindutva ideology, they are committing crime. They are given free hand to do a particular crime and then the state, in a way, you uh, have uh, uh, omits it; it mm. avoids you have, uh, punishing them. So this is what we have been discussing. So if it happens wherever in the world, mm. Mm. it is being done. Be it in Muslims, be it Muslim countries, be it Christian countries, be it countries where there is no religion at all. It is not about religion. So the logics should never be like, Acha, you do the you do particular crime, that gives a green signal to do uh, yeah. to do mm. a crime against a particular yeah. group for me. Mm. Mm. So mm. crime anywhere is a crime against humanity. It has mm. to be condemned. Yeah. That mm. is what my yeah. point is. So right, just right. on mm. just on that point, um, now the thing comes in wherein crime keeps on happening under a certain regime, right? It happens under a certain law and certain regime and uh, our constitution has stated that uh, uh, a, a prime minister or a, a certain person in power may be, may it be anyone is mm. given a term of five years or two and a half years. That's the main term that's they are given, right? So don't you think that uh, that was a oh, well valid or, you know, a good point until, uh, uh, you know, a long time back, right? If you look at this point of time in five years, things change you know, you don't even oh, remember what happened five yeah, years ago with yeah. you. Right. Mm -hmm. At that point of time, the uh, change was slow. The change would take time. Right now, do you think the change or, you know, the uh, election, you can say, you know, the change in system, the change in power should uh, reduce. The time should be reduced, you know, so that because we know that whenever the time is inversely proportional to pressure. So right now, when a certain power, anybody who comes into power, they have like mere paas 5 saal hai they gaddi meri hai for that time being so if that time is reduced to say one and a half years because if we do not perform our duties at our workstations we get fired 
but these yeah. people mm-hmm. nobody is no holding a, holding them accountable <laughs> so do you feel that the uh, time duration of the their power stint should be reduced and you know so that their work is beneficial for the common man Uh, you mean uh, time should be reduced can, can you please repeat that particular point time as in, fi- as, in f- as in 5 years is the uh, main you know you stay for a, pre- a prime minister or a say, chief minister or anybody in power so it's if it's reduced to so say one and a half years or you know two and a half years or two years basically that kind of a thing i what's, think what's uh, your it has take got on that? its own uh, pros and cons if you reduce the yeah. uh, the duration of a governance uh, be it the center of the state uh mm. the problem is uh, this particular system has evolved uh, after uh, many uh, centuries of experiences when it comes to the, uh, the administration of a country so um i think 5 uh, years uh, uh, time has to be something which has to be debated it can be debated of course uh, i think this debate has happened in the constituent assembly as well Uh, when the uh, constitution when our constitution was being drafted by the constituent assembly um, after a lot of discussions and debates we have decided that we will come to 5 years i think that can be renewed uh, at this particular point in uh, time when we are suffocating from this particular tyranny uh, of uh, okay. the higher rulers yeah yeah and also yeah. the two term thing should it come into india as well like you can only run for uh a certain thing for only two terms and not more than that sorry come again as in you can only run for two terms as in in, in a us election you can only hold ah. the seat or you can only be in power for for two, yes, for two yes, terms and one, then you yes, have to yes but yes. consecutively a person can be uh, yeah. elected only f- uh, two times and then the That's president right. uh, presidential nomination should change uh, the candidate yeah, should presidential Yeah, Absolutely. that can yeah, be. Yeah. That, that of course need to be. Uh, you have practice. I think these debates need to happen, uh, and also even uh, debates on uh, the electorate, uh, on how we conduct elections in India need to be debated. Yes, yes, uh, yes. Does it actually <laughs> yeah, <absolutely>. represent uh, <laughs> uh, the the entire um, section of people uh, uh, in our country? Does it really represent, or uh, is there real kind of Hmm. Uh, elections happening in india what is the pros and cons of ballot elections what hmm. are the pros yeah. and cons of the uh, electronic voting machines and things like uh, things like that need to be discussed i think every at this particular yeah. juncture uh, every a uh, pillar of democracy even the fifth estate we had a small glimpse on that particular topic the indian media how the media runs everything yeah. has deteriorated hmm. Uh, uh, yes, uh, in yes, the of course. Of the, <laughs> of course, yeah. in the last few years, so I think mm, all this need to be uh, learned, unlearned, mm. and then relearned again. Relearned, yes, very, very true. By yeah, Jews, very, very true. <laughs> <laughs> a very by Jews statement was, that is. I, I think, yeah, it's a very by Jews statement, but it's it's a way of life. Learn, unlearn, yeah. and relearn, and that's and what Eric, uh, Eric, uh, and we were talking about some time ago. Yeah. So, yeah. um, I um, as we are coming towards the end of this conversation. okay and there's one thing which i want to uh, say make make clear before we move on to the next question or the next thing that i want uh, mr sohel to highlight on so <clears throat> uh, excuse me for that i asked mr sohel some questions okay now for the listeners out there on this platform we are not taking sides as you know we did this we yeah. had this conversations with multiple uh, people from activists from multiple sides when i asked him about the muslim world now the thing about it is some people um, take a lot of things out of context as well a lot of these questions i have to take sides and ask him questions so i understand what's going on in his mind now whenever and uh, this is a uh, this is a suggestion to all of our listeners as well whenever you are talking to a muslim an indian muslim it is highly irrelevant to take the case of another muslim country and then pose a question to the indian muslim with respect to the other muslim country because That's indian it. muslims have detached especially the, pakistan as pakistan to pakistan ko to baaju mein rakho yeah because pakistan is part of the middle eastern countries it's, it's it is connected to those countries right india is the indian muslims are not see i am not saying all indian muslims because we have heard some people know 
some Indian Muslims who have this allegiance to these Muslim countries, which has to be condemned, which has to be tried. I feel they have to be tried as sedition. Frankly speaking, if any person is siding another country or another country's logic, irrespective of religion, and he has to be, you know, there has to be some kind of retrospection. If you are saying that, oh, this country is better than this, that, that's another topic, that's another debate. But my oh, point that I am trying to make is that whenever you are talking to an Indian Muslim, he has no obligation to answer your questions when you are asking him questions related to another country because that is another country, another set of rules, another uh, world out there. It's not at all related to India. So, yeah. coming back to uh, the thing that I wanted to ask you, as you are in human rights and fighting for human rights, how is the condition right now in can you see me? No, uh, the no, picture gone. went off. Okay, I'll just switch my camera then. Uh, hold on, I can switch on my camera. Okay, okay, you can see my head. It's it. It seems. Okay, I'll just yeah. go a little bit behind. Sorry, guys, if you're listening to this, watching this, I just my camera, the second camera turned off. Yeah. So, what is the condition of Indian Muslims? Uh, not Indian Muslims. I'm sorry. What is the condition of human rights in India right now, as compared to the previous decade? before the 2009s and 2010s and the 2014s and right now as you are in this sphere as you are in this world how different has it been you for you uh, as compared as to the past and now uh, before coming into this question i would yeah. just uh, touch upon the thing that you just mentioned about yes sir uh, you have ch charcha charcha with the chichas charcha with the ch uh, chichas uh, i think chicha is an urdu I... word by the way what does chicha yeah, mean yeah. Yes, I know. <laughs> <coughs> Angles, elders. Elders, right? Yeah. Exactly, elders. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So you said uh, we don't take sides. Yes, I think sir. that is the biggest value hmm. of the Indian media uh, hmm. uh, for the last many many years till the, the last ten years. Yeah. Doordarshan, hmm. All India Radio. And all the private channels, all these channels actually did not take sides for the last Sorry. many years. It is yes. all of a sudden there is a there is a big shift from hmm. not taking sides to clear clearly taking a political stand on things. You know, there is a Prasar Bharati Broadcasting Corporation Act 1990. Yeah. According to this, there is a section 12, subsection 2. I would mm -hmm. just like to uh, read from that particular section. I think this is yeah. something that that uh, defines the value of any media yeah. even us okay yeah uh, this case, it's, it says the citizens rights right to be informed freely truthfully mm -hmm. and objectively mm -hmm. on all matters mm -hmm. of public interest and mm -hmm. presenting a fair and balanced flow of information yeah. including mm -hmm. con contrasting views without advocating yeah. any opinion or ideology mm -hmm. of its own without right Hmm. without advocating any opinion or ideology of oh, its own. Oh, yes. Very that important. The yeah. most important point, which is clearly, hmm. which clearly different Indian media uh, for, for the last many decades. But for the last some years, what we see is, uh, this is given, uh, this, this, this has completely thrown into dustbin. This particular law hmm. or this provision of the law has been put into dustbin. Yes, so, yes. Like hmm. any other laws. Hmm. Like all laws right. are put in a dustbin like this. Uh, the same way this law has also been uh, put in right. dustbin. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, but true. Uh, true. Yes, you have Isn't been asking because... about. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, were yeah, you saying on, something, Eric? No, no, no. Go on, go on. Yeah, uh, you have been asking about uh, the uh, the situation of uh, the human, the human rights. rights situation, human rights yeah. uh, crisis, or the human rights situation that we have in India. Hmm. Uh, I would like to mention that India is among the least free democracies and it has touched the bottom of the rank lists in almost all the human rights indexes across the globe. Mm. Like for instance, Universal Human Rights Index mm. prepared by the OHCHR, which is the Office of the High Commission of the Human Rights Council, the United Nations. Yeah. Government. Yeah. The Freedom mm. House, the Cato Index, all these indexes actually they, they do a complete evaluation of the human rights situations across the globe and they rank countries according to that. So what okay. you see in the last 10 years is India has come to the most bottom of it. Okay. And it is it has turned into a place, into, into a hell for different sections within the community, be it six, mm. be it the mm. be it the Christians, be it the Dalits, the Adivasis, yeah. be it the Muslims. 
all those mm. weaker sections and even the yeah. financially uh, backward, backward hindu classes mm. all these classes matlab backward classes all these people have been facing the brunt of injustice and mm. they have been uh, they have mm. been sub- subjected to state violence in the last 10 mm. years so mm. this is the human rights records that we have you know the the world's biggest human rights organization the amnesty international had to shut down their indian office yes which was a very very sad thing very very sad thing so mm. uh, you know uh, human rights the word human rights even the word human rights has been uh, uh, mm. raped kiya gaya filed balatkar kiya gaya yes human rights yes. is a bad word hmm human rights activists are anti nationals <laughs> anti nationals yep yep this is the way that the country uh, which actually has defined redefined human rights redefined hmm. itself i think this is a very hmm. bad state of affairs that we have in our country now hmm hmm and how do we look forward to this being uh, um, healed or this thing being you know reestablished or re uh, uh, what would i say be bring brought back to life because what happens is people think if anything is going against for example amnesty international was reporting incidents of violence against indians in india by indians and then mm. again that is uh, seen by the government because the, then the government said it cracked down on, and it's not only uh, amnesty a lot of ngos which were foreign funded mm. a lot of ngos which were for human rights which were not even foreign funded have had to close down their uh, uh, offices have uh, had to close down their services how is it going to be about for us in the coming years now does this I look think, good uh, si- i think uh, situations may improve in the coming years because okay. i don't think uh, the politics of hate hate last long last yeah long. Hmm. that's very uh, less but like but sir but sir one thing one thing that i wanted to uh, highlight when you said that in the previous uh, yeah. um, minutes as well the the yeah. political hate it doesn't last long but the impact that it makes in the short lived life is it remains for years like the impact yeah. that germany the impact in russia the impact in communist china it lives yeah. on today and historians history students of history have to study that because the impact Definitely. has lived on for years and the society right now has been shaped by those uh, what would i say incidents or those period of short lived periods of uh, hate politics and hate movements and yes exactly also the fact that and also the fact that uh, that this comes in wherein uh, right now it's the hate is so deep rooted in everyone okay wherein everyone starts believing this lie that you know uh, muslims are against the country or you know uh, if they do not follow a certain religion that or they are anti nationals or if they do not like a certain personality they are anti and this also come to a fact that we are a country wherein we like making gods we like making everyone god who is a personality example you know just giving an example people don't hate me on this but first of all sachin tendulkar amitabh bachchan and yeah. all these other personalities yeah. who are rajnikanth who do well for our ntr rajnikanth Raj, <laughs> ntr so many people NTR he played the list, yeah. Yeah, all these people yeah hmm the list is endless because again. in india we do not see them as great human beings that we can strive to be we put them on a pedestal and say that these are gods and these people should not be touched which is the problem that we face at this point i feel wherein when that feeling comes in where you put a person on a hmm. pedestal and that that person cannot be questioned that is when things go haywire uh, so what would you say on that and uh, a last point on how is how can we improve in our daily lives or you know what can we do to make a small change in everyone's lives yeah yeah fair yes. point uh, uh, yes prashant and eric have you uh, heard about uh, the the biblical story of the david and goliath the yes, war yes, between of david course. and goliath yeah. the famous story of one of the most famous stories of the bible <laughs> the, i think after the crucifixion the is the most story, famous t- story of the bible <laughs> yes the What first story that this, we are told as kids uh, this, this david and goliath for those of the spectators of the of the viewers who doesn't uh, know about the david and goliath i just would like to mention the small part but just to make the uh, long story short uh, some points from some uh, glimpse of the story a, a montage of the whole story of david and goliath you know david yeah. and his people is standing on one side of the mountain goliath and his whole people is standing on the other side 
they are uh, getting ready to fight they are going to have a war between them and goliath is a person who has been completely uh, armored in all its sense uh, he has been with all his armors uh, he is ready to fight and he comes down the valley Seven and then says down. that we need not have uh, an outright war between two groups we can have one single fight and let let that fight between two individuals define the whole victory and lo lo uh, losing the, the the war so they waited for someone to come and david and his people were so frightened they were so uh, uh, completely uh, a kind of uh, uh, intimidated because goliath was a giant completely. according to legends yeah. he was 13 feet tall 13 to 14 feet tall he was a giant yes he was a giant and mm. what what happened was david comes down the valley and says that i am here to fight hmm so goliath was sleeping uh, beside a tree and uh, one person who was instigating people from david's group to come down and fight with goliath goliath was getting bored and then he was sleeping uh, in, 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 beneath a tree so david came and when david came this person uh, just uh, woke up this goliath and said see someone has come to fight with you he came like this and saw what who has come here so he saw acha ye aadmi mujhse ladne ke liye aaya hai bola ha ye tingu this person who is the one who is going to have a fight with goliath one to one combat hand to hand combat with goliath <laughs> so they, but, but by all means of you have uh, of logics david is going to lose the war lose this hmm. hmm. but what happened was david silently calmly with full patience with full balance of mind and full confidence he was walking step by step and then when goliath was beating into his chest and then coming to fight with david and he also need, he thought that he all doesn't have need to have all these armors and this sword and things like that and he was uh, looking at uh, david uh, with so that uh, you have Uh, the hypothetic situation that what the, what, what I am going to rip him apart. This is what his feeling was. And David, what he did was, he just sat there calmly, and he took a small thing, a sling, from his hmm. waist. Gulail. Ah, uh, gulail, <laughs> gulail. And then he put a small uh, pellet, a small uh, stone, there. Then he started to rotate. the whole people who were supporting goliath started to hmm. laugh like anything what hmm. drama kya natak chal raha hai yahan david hmm. what is hmm. he doing the david was protecting this gulail hmm winding up the gulail eh hmm. winding up the gulail he is winding up yeah he is winding like up the gulail yeah yeah and then he released on this particular time and it directly hmm. went in between those particular armors and hit directly hmm. at the center of his forehead and hmm. he fell between his eyes which is face on the ground hmm. that is the end hmm. of goliath goliath yeah. who was supposed to win with all all logics all you uh, have all you uh, have um, reasons all methods of reasoning goliath was supposed to win but what happened was david won so what is the is the story what is the lesson of the story the lesson of the story is goliath represents what we see the tyrannies of our our times not only mm. modi or anyone all the tyrannies of our times and mm. all the tyrannies in the, which which came in the in, in the past david is that particular guy who represented that the creative minority you know creative minority creative minority came i, I believe that eric and prashant and your likes and our likes is that particular creative minority who hmm. are supposed to yep. change the course of history from darkness to light as the diwali uh, i have the biggest thing is the, today we are speaking on the day of diwali it is the creative yep. minority who are going to set light to this hmm. uh, uh, darkness and the tyranny we wish we, we cannot be angry mob <clears throat> angry yep. mob organizing an angry mob and crying and uh, read uh, the 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 uh, have, uh, the problems will not solve the solution 
you know in the history there were gandhi there was abul kalam azad there were nelson mandela there was martin luther all these people are actually the creative minority they were not angry mobs yeah what we need to do mm. is we need to uh, consolidate that particular creative minority mm. who believes mm. in the in the values of humanitarian like humanitarian values who yes. believes in the values of equality liberty fraternity and justice mm. now it is humanity versus this politics of hate yeah we need to mm. construct the society on the basis of on this dualism it is not hindu mm. versus muslim or it is not india versus pakistan it is not this yeah. didactic and myopic way of doing, mm. looking at it yeah it is mm. humanity versus hindutva or mm. uh, hindutva as in the hindutva politics not the religion mm. Right. humanity versus the politics of hate hmm. so we all irrespective of the fact you are from a hindu society or community or you are from a muslim community or you are from a christian community or you are from a person who is an atheist who who an who is an agnostic be yep. it any person they hmm. all all those people who believe in the basic idea of humanity we are one and we can jo hai defend hmm. humanity yeah. against mm. this hatred this is what i would like to say as a mark of ending this particular discussion yeah so prashant uh, any last words yeah that i mean the last <laughs> words the last words it. that uh, mr sohel said and summed it all for us right and th- that's what we are doing that's what we are trying to do and this is uh, as i said spread love and light and love beats all kind of hate there's nothing there's nothing yeah. that can withstand love i think people might have reasonings for their justifications for their acts of violence but i think the most neutralizing thing in the world the most neutralizing element in the world is not hate my dear friend it's not hate my dear friends it is love you win with love you cannot win with hate because when you hate you have a winner and a loser when you have love you have two winners you have no losers and that's where we have to head as a society we all are winners we all have to coexist with each other we all have to question each other at times but we have to go arm in arm and stick shoulder to shoulder with with each other and fight whatever is wrong fight whatever is injustice and with that i hand over the mic and the dais to eric raji thomas <laughs> yeah so guys ladies and gentlemen this was such a great episode on this special occasion of diwali wherein we are not out uh, you know uh, cracking you know uh, bursting yeah. firecrackers mm. even though we want to or we you know we we thought had to have this discussion and uh, have a lot of insight from mr sohail who was so kind enough who cancelled one of his meetings and uh, prashant who had one of uh, his outings uh, that he planned with his family i'm going to go so anyways thank you guys so much, both i'm going you. to go anyways <laughs> 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 yes so it's been such a lovely time you know talking about a country wherein we love all the festivals and also just one fact one fun fact you know all the people from us and saudi arabia and every other country where oh, my uh, relatives live they say dude you guys have so many holidays because you celebrate every festival mm. <laughs> so that also comes to a point that we get a lot of holidays because we fell- celebrate all the festivals be it any religion so that is also a big plus point because as indians we thrive in chaos because we live among so many people and we thrive in chaos that's our main thing mm. we love crowd around us we love the chaos around us and as soon as we see chaos it calms us chaos comes indians that's all i've seen because we do not like silence we do not like to sit alone because there are always 10 people around you be it in a local train be it if you're walking anywhere it's always around you so in that chaos you find your peace in that chaos you see you do not know each other's name you see all as indians you see all as human beings and you see every so in that moment you feel the respect for everyone you see everybody as equals so on that note guys we at charcha with the chichas only want to spread love joy and light in this special occasion of diwali and quill foundation also does the same for people who are not 
able to reach there so that they also get the justice that they deserve so thank you so much everybody for listening to this episode of charcha with the chichas and do hit the subscribe button right now and i should have said this earlier do hit that subscribe button you know that we bring in content every wednesday and if you're listening to this on the audio podcast on any audio platform right now do hit the follow button on google podcast spotify apple podcast anywhere that you're listening to and we are also there on instagram with the same handle charcha with the chicha and on twitter we are cwc underscore pod so guys enjoy this festive season christmas is around the corner and hopefully this new year we beat corona and we get into this new year with a bang and take the country forward and keep asking questions so guys this is it from me and prashant and mrs suhail here take care bye bye that is fun <laughs>